I'm your host, Jimmy Chen. Arr. Hello. Say I can use my left as well as my right. Hello. Welcome to my channel. I can do this. You pat your head and rub the belly at the same time. Welcome to Food for H and M. I am Jimmy Chen. Remember, be yourself. You want to create your own destiny. That means be the master of your own destiny. Build your own future. Write your own ticket. Write your life. Write. Your own future. Be the boss. Be the boss man of your life, or be the boss lady of your life. So, food for H and M is the channel, and discussing. Wait, food for H and M is the name, and discussing all things Holy Bible is the game. We are in. The book of Second Kings. I'll try to be quieter because there are people pretending to sleep. No one really sleeps now. I mean, no one really sleeps that much. Chapter six. The next section is titled "An Axe Head Floats." So the、uh, so you know what an axe could be. I'll try to find. A, I'll put a. Axe right here. It's not. I'm not axing you. You know. It is a. It's like a tool, but、um, it's what you use to chop down a tree. An axe. A X E. The company of the prophets said to Elisha. Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, where each of us can get a pole, and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, "Go." Then one of them said, "Won't you please come with your servant?" Servant, I will. Elisha replied, and he went went with them. So you see, Elisha, he said he will, and he did it. You know, he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my lord! He cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God, that's Elisha, asked, "Where did it fall?" When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick. And threw it there, and made the iron float. Ah,、oh, lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. Iron, iron, iron usually does not float if it's. A solid piece. You know that we have boats that are made out of steel, but you know they're made. You know a boat is not a solid hunk of I,、uh, steel, so it floats. But Elisha made a solid piece of iron float up to the, the surface of the water, and then the man. Got the axe head back. He got the axe head back, 
and you put it back on a pole. I guess poles could be short poles, you know. I guess something like this, we call this a handle, you know, or I guess it's a handle, you know. And then they would put the axe head, you know, what you use to cut the tree. The axe head. You know, so the so an axe would look like, you know, there's that part and then there's the handle, this axe head. So you could always get a make a new handle because remember like steel and iron they don't really rot you know it doesn't rot but your handle to hold you know you know what I'm saying that wood will rot so you just keep the axe head and then over time it could be like even more than 100 years you can still use the same axe head you just replace the handle the wood handle so I guess they call it a pole back then remember I told you a long time ago they spoke and thought differently so they each get a pole is each get a, like a get a handle and then they'll put the axe head on it and then they'll start chopping trees down. The next section is titled Elisha Traps Blinded Arameans. Now the king of Aram, Aram was at war with Israel. Oh, now they're fighting. Aram usually is on Israel's side. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, Israel, beware of passing that place because, because the Arameans are going down there, there. So the king of Israel checked on the place in indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram, he summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel. None of us, my lord the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. So the king of Aram, his officers told him, I know that Elisha somehow he can, can know what's going on. Here in Aram, even though he's not close by. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there, there, they went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God, remember the servant sometimes is the man of God's learner. You know, like the man of God is Elisha and he's a prophet. He is like a Jedi. So the servant is some, sometimes 
his learner or his padawan like in star wars star the star wars movies he got up and went out early the next morning an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city oh no my lord what shall we do the servant asked don't be afraid the prophet answered those who are with us are more than those who are with them and elisha prayed open his eyes lord so that he may see then the lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw that the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So remember, Elisha used to be Elijah's Padawan, his master. You know, like in Star Wars, there's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Believe it or not, some of you haven't really seen the movies. He trained Darth Vader. He taught Darth Vader how to fight and how to use the Force. <laughs> taught him how to swing his lightsaber. Taught him all the techniques. You know, they're like how you like stab or like you block. You know, Obi Wan Kenobi taught Darth Vader how to do all of that. So Elisha, who taught him, was this person called Elijah. And remember, in Star Wars, after Obi-Wan, no, after, you have to watch the old Star Wars movies. After Obi-Wan Kenobi died, he became a force ghost. You know, he was more powerful, like Yoda also became a force ghost. So it's like Elijah became a force ghost. He's a force ghost that rides in a chariot of fire, pulled by char uh, fire, fiery horses, horses made of fire. But they're like invisible. You know that force ghosts, sometimes they're, they disappear and then they will like, hello, you know, they'll make themselves, you know, visible to you. So... Elisha could see them and then but his servant because Elisha is a master, you know So his servant could not see all of these Kadosh Malikim in Chariots pulled by horses and they're all made of fire Scary So it's not written here, but Elijah was right there did. You know, he's driving one of them Get it? Elijah, remember he, uh, horses and chariot, chariot, one chariot, came and picked them up. So he is a charioteer, chariot, charioteer, like a you know, force ghost in the Star Wars movies. But here there's many more than one. The Kadosh Malakim. You have to watch an earlier video. There's more of them. So it's like there are all these Jedi that are one with the Force already, you know. More powerful than Elisha, backing them up. You know, let me just spell it all out for you. Let's say there's an army, right? But usually one Jedi, like Skywalker, you know, he could kill like five, ten, ten thousand normal like soldiers, soldiers. But when they be when Skywalker becomes a Force ghost, he could kill like fifty. 50,000 soldiers all by himself 
goes from 5,000 to 10,000 to like 50,000 all by himself, you know. Maybe more. So there were all these guys in fiery chariots pulled by fiery horses and each one could kill like 50,000 soldiers. But you know, like if they have a chariot and a horse, they could kill like 150,000 soldiers because they have a, they're in a chariot, you know, they, they have a sword. But if you're in a chariot, usually you have more weapons, you know what I mean? Like you're driving a chariot, right? And you're, you have all these weapons, you have like, you have a compartment in your chariot and you pull something out and you like throw it at someone, you know, you're driving around and you pull something out and you like throw it at someone. And then you get your bow and arrow out and then somehow you like tie the reins to something you're like shooting people you know I mean you're not, you're not just running around with a sword and then they usually have like a longer sword you know like a really long one a sword might be only this long they have one that's like this long and then they'll just like grab that really long sword and just like chop at people when they drive by on the horse you know so, there are force ghosts with more weapons, Kadosh Malakim, and they could kill more. So, verse 18, as the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike the other army, this army, with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha, Elisha had asked. Aha! Elisha told them, this is not the road and this is not the city. Follow me and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can, can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked, and there they were inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked to Elisha, shall I kill them? My father, shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. Would you kill those you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water, water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back. To their master. So he prepared a feast, a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating, eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master so the band is from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory so let's that was a long story what I'll, I'll tell you a secret when what are the when are these Kadosh Malakim around you will be afraid but you don't know why because one of them could be standing like a hundred feet away from you and they're powerful, you know, and they're invisible, but you could still subconsciously like see them. And you know, your, your eyes are getting really big. Like, <laughs> you're scary. But it doesn't really register because it's subconscious. So, when, uh, 
the king of Aram. Remember, they started to fight with Israel when they usually helped helped them. Remember, when you help another country attack, you get like part of the, you know, the when you win, you you usually like rob, <laughs> you rob the other country, you know, and then when you help someone attack another country and you have this stuff, you know, that you robbed from the other country and then you just share it you know with who helped you but Aram is now attacking Israel So let's take a look. It's a. It's not very clear. I like to be crystal clear, understand things very well. So the Arameans, the king said, "I will set up my camp in such and such a place." on guard in such places so they sort of invaded the Arameans and they would just you would see them camped out camped out So there are Arameans in the land of Israel. Okay, so one one day, remember, after his officers were talking about Elisha, the king of Aram just sent a army, a large army, into Israel. So you know what I mean, they, they first sort of invaded and they were camped. There were some soldiers just all over the place in camps. They invaded first and then one night they just sent a large army into Israel. But it seems like their reason for sending the army in was to try to capture one person, Elisha. So it was Elisha sort of against an army. But he has powers. Once they came, they somehow did not attack him because remember I told you the Kadosh Malachim, even Elijah, you know, he's like when, when he went to heaven, he became like Kadosh Malachim again. And they drive f chariots of fire that are pulled by horses made of fire, and they're invisible, they're like force ghosts. So they dared to not attack Elisha. Just one person because he was backed up by like an army of Kadosh Malakim in their chariots pulled by their horses. So they were just like the army was just standing there looking at him. And then Elisha asked the Lord, right? The Son of God. Remember, God is God in three persons. For the ability, the ability to make them all blind. She so was like, you're blind, all of you. And then that great army, all of them were like, ah. I can't see. The hey, homie, can you see? He's like, no, nah, man, I can't see either. <laughs> so somehow, then he went. He like hypnotized them all. And he said, follow me, some peas, you know, you're blind. And then he led that entire army, one, one person, Elisha, 
led them to Samaria. And then the king of Israel saw one person, Elisha, leading a blind army, right? The Arameans, they're all like blind and hypnotized. They're like, uh, I guess we'll just follow Elisha. You know, because like Jedi can Jedi mind trick you, you know. Remember in uh, a certain movie, Obi-Wan Kenobi was talking to an alien smoking the death sticks, cigarettes. The alien went, he was smoking the, the cigarette, right, the death stick. You want a death stick, Obi-Wan Kenobi? And then Obi-Wan Kenobi, Obi Kenobi said, no, I do not want a death stick. He said, you do not want a death stick. Ooh, he hypnotized him. And then the guy smoking the the guy smoking the death stick was like, I don't want a death stick. And then he like threw it away. I'm hypnotized. Mind control. It's hip, hypnosis slash mind control. Jedi mind trick. So he just Jedi mind tricked them to follow him. He led them all the way to Samaria, which is where, remember, the king of Israel lives. Because you have to remember Ahab, right? Ahab lived in Samaria. So the king of Israel is always in Samaria. And then the king's, king saw Elisha and all these blind soldiers, Arameans. And he, he's like, should we kill them? And then Elisha, Elisha was nice. He said, just feed them and send them home. So because like Elisha and the king of Israel were nice to the Aramean soldiers, I guess that fixed, fixed, fixed things. Remember I said that uh, the Arameans just started to fight with Israel even though they always like backed them up and helped them before that. So I guess it fixed fixed things and then you know they were on better terms. The next section is titled Famine in Besieged Samaria. Sometime later, sometime later, Ben Hadad, king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid siege to Samaria. So they're attacking Israel again. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80, 80 shekels of silver and a quarter, quarter of a cab of seed pods for five shekels. So that's a lot. 80 shekels of silver, dude. Two pounds. <sighs> As the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried to him, Help me, my lord, the king. The king replied, If the lord does not help you, where can I get help for you? from the threshing floor, from the wine press. Then he asked her, what's the matter? She answered, this woman said to me, give up your son so we may eat him today and tomorrow we'll eat my son. So we cooked, cooked, my son and ate him the next day I said to her give up your son so we may eat him 
but she had hidden him. When the king heard the woman's words, he tore his robes. As he went along the wall, the people looked, and they saw that under his robes he had sackcloth on his body. He said, May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if the head of Elisha, son of Shaphat, remains on his shoulders today. Now Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. The king sent a messenger ahead. But before he arrived, Elisha said to the elders, Don't you see how this murderer is sending someone to cut off my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold it shut against him. Is not the sound of his master's footsteps behind him? While he was still talking to them, the messenger came down to him. The king said, This disaster is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Let's read the next chapter. lifted yeah. it is not too long second kings chapter 7 Elisha replied hear the word of the Lord this is what the Lord says about this time tomorrow a sea of the finest flour will sell for a shekel so that's not bad and two sea of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, so the king uh, is blind. Not, he doesn't see very well. That's why he's leaning on someone's arm. But he's not leaning on someone's arm. It just means he's he's blind. You know, it's like a metaphor. Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, answer, answered Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. The next section is titled, The Siege Lifted. Now, there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, Why stay here until we die? If we say, We'll go into the city. The famine is there, and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. At dusk, they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. There, er, for the Lord had caused the Arameans so caused them to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army so that they said to one another look the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us so the Lord, that's God, the creator, the member, God in three persons. The Lord, the Lord is the son of God. So the Arameans, when besieging is like, they're really attacking the city. Like with a lot of 
like arrows and they were catapulting big rocks and just trying to like break down the door and break the walls that's a siege so while they were sieging the city they heard like what's that I hear more chariots and horses they thought so the Lord right the Son Jesus he could like you know he's invisible in heaven but they're like they're, they're, they can hear armies coming and they thought you know so he could like what I am like put a thought into all of their heads at the same time you know he's powerful see Jesus is cool so they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned so they got afraid they're like you know so those are the kind of offensive weapons the Lord Jesus has he can make you hear all kinds of loud sounds you're like and then he'll just inject thoughts into everyone's head the entire army like all of them and then make them afraid ah and then they they ab ran away and abandoned their tents tents they abandoned their tents like their homes remember a tent is like you know what a tent is but back then the tents were bigger like a temporary dwelling like a tw temporary house so they just left it behind their tents tents and they left their horses and donkeys behind they left the camp as it was and ran for their lives the men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp entered entered one of the tents and ate and drank and so the guy just went into a tent and that's strange <laughs> he just picked a tent and it's not his and went in there and ate and drank food and drink that you know food and bitch that wasn't his <laughs> then they took silver gold and clothes and went off and hid them so there remember there are these four people <laughs> they just went there and you know kind of like hello s and <laughs> just looked around oh here's some food and ate and drank and oh wow it's silver is not mine and gold clothes and then they just took them and like just hit them somewhere then they said to each other what we're doing is not right this is a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves if we wait until daylight punishment will overtake us let's go at once and report this to the the royal palace so they went and called out to the city gatekeepers and told them we went into the Aramean camp and no one was there not a sound of anyone only tethered horses and donkeys and the tents left just as they were the gatekeepers shouted the news and it was reported within the palace the king got up in the night and said to his officers I will tell you what the Arameans have done to us they know we are starving so they have left the camp to hide in the countryside thinking they they will surely come out and then we will take them alive and get into the city one of his officers answered have some men take five of the horses five of the horses that are left in the city their plight will be like that of all the Israelites left here yes they will only be like all these Israelites who are doomed so let us send them to find out what happened 
So they selected two chariots with their horses, and the king sent them after the Aramean army. He commanded the drivers, Go and find out what has happened. They followed them as far as the Jordan, and they found the whole road strewn with the clothing and equipment the Arameans had thrown away in their headlong flight. So when they ran away, they also threw their clothes and equipment. So remember, armies don't just have weapons. They have other things. So <laughs> they got rid, they were, as they were running, they, were, they got rid of everything. Kind of crazy. So the messengers returned and reported to the king. Then the people went out and plundered, stole their stuff, plundered the camp of the Arameans. So a saya of the finest flour sold for a shekel, and two sayas of barley sold for a shekel, as the Lord had said. Now the king had put the officer on whose arm he leaned in charge of the gate, and the people trampled him in the gateway, and he died just as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to his house. It happened as the man of God had said to the king, about this time tomorrow, a sayah of the finest flour will sell for a shekel and two sayahs of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer had said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? The man of God had replied, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat any of it. And that is exactly what happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gateway, and he died. So everything that Elisha says, it happens. And that's what a real prophet, you know, the Lord. Jesus, the Lord, right? The Son of God, the Creator of everything. Zzz. Hey, one of His prophets. They're not the fake Sith, you know. The real, the prophets have to be God, you know, the Lord's prophets. And then whatever they say, it happens. Okay, thank you for listening. It is now January, and uh, let me see, what is coming up in January? Any holidays? January 2024, uh, holidays. So there is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. That's on the 15th. There are days of observance. Uh, I think that really might be it. There is National Hugging Day. National Hug. Hugging Day. Hug some. Hug for you. There is Blood Donor Month. Oh, it is Blood Donor Month. How fantastic. Chocolate Cake Day. That, uh, okay, yeah. But remember, in February, there's Valentine's Day. 
So remember, keep God first. He'll take you places.